time you're away I long for you so much I can find my way We got everything here At least to stay alive And the time that we share Makes it all worthwhile That this place John and Catherine, Catherine Brickett settled in this area around 1816. The original log and wood frame house was later replaced with the present house built from locally fired clay bricks. At the time, the main route wove through rural Chatham, New Hampshire and Stowe, Maine, ending at the Ricketts front door. For many years, the site marked the end of the air on the main frontier. For five decades, John and Catherine Phoebe, John's second wife after Catherine's death in 1839 and their nine children, subsidated, I think that's the word, on their small scale, that doesn't sound right, but anyway, on their small scale farm growing crops such as potatoes, corn, subsisted. subsisted. Yes, that's it. That is an S. Yep. Um, during the winter and spring, like most New England farmers, they supplemented their income through logging and maple sugaring operation. That's what I was just reading. And that's their house. Cool. Here. And we're going to go there, I guess. Yep. We're in bear country. Watch out. Bar. Here I am. <laughs> hey. Watch me trip and fall. Oh. Trip and fall hazards. I haven't seen any yet, but yeah. Pretty. It's a nice big beautiful mole behind you. Wow. A red pine, a Norway pine. You see how the bark's kind of reddish? Yeah. We have three needles instead of five. It has a white pond, you can tell. See the bark? Oh, sorry, I thought you were pointing at that. That's the difference. You mentioned Burlesville. Look at them, Burlesville. Holy smokes. Yes, so. Something's snapping over there. Is it a bear? There's something snapping. There's something black over there. I did hear something. Snapping twigs. Look at those burls. I there's ice damage. Wow. It's crazy.
This used to be a swinging bridge. If I can find some pictures of it, I'll put it up so you guys can see what we're talking about. This is Wild River. Oh, there's some ducks down there. Float around. Right by that big rock. Could be loon, they're just different than what I'm used to seeing. Whoa, this is a lot different than what we used to walk on. like rain off in the distance. There's a ton of birches down there. They cut a bunch of trees. There's a bunch there. All those birches. They must have had damage and they cut them. Plus for the view. Holy. Look at that. This is about the, whatever that name is, Falcons. Falcons historically nested at 16 locations throughout Maine, ranging from the Down East Coast to the Western Mountains. Well, we're in the Western Mountains. So there could be Falcons here. Probably somewhere up there. 
We're at 2,000 feet. Yeah, that's what it says. I know, I got I did get a view of that. Evans Notch. Near this point, the watersheds of the Androscoggin and the Saco Rivers divide. Water flowing south enters the Saco River and that flowing north enters the Androscoggin River. Look at how beautiful that is. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. I just can't, I can't express how huge that is. It almost makes you woozy, it's so steep. It, yes. It's a long ways. And in case you hadn't guessed, downhill is just as far. I know, I right did. It down out of sight. I did um, show them down there too, it's crazy. So we're at about 2,000 feet, I guess. Cool. Ooh. Long ways. So just found this. Errol O'Donohue, Maine, Private, 42nd Infantry, Infantry, World War I, February 18th, 1894 to December 31st, 1963. They have a nice flag and a pretty rock and a bunch of pennies. Pennies means you visited. Bunch of pennies. I have so, some. I have some in the truck. Go back in the truck and get one. Maybe. And this little this thing here. That will tell. I think it tells you exact altitude. I got to be very careful. Fourteen fifty-eight feet. Okay, so it's fourteen hundred feet. Okay, there we go. Cool. Pinned right into the rock. Putting a penny here. Oops. Not very good. We visited. I can hear the rain.